Alrighty, let us wait and see for some people to arrive before I get too much into this. Give me a chance to actually try and find the screwdrivers I need. Let's see, everything's looking up and running. Oh, well, 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 it's Mr. Ice Game You. Fancy meeting you here, Mr. Ice Game You. I'm going to have to try and find a way of spelling that as your name without actually saying scam in it, like a scam you or something. I have to be creative. Very quiet tonight. What, has everybody got another life or something? Hmm. Oh well, I we'll, guess we'll get to pulling this one apart. Yeah, long time no see. Yep, only a couple of hours. Anyway, so basically what happened is uh, I was actually contacted by someone on Facebook because I was selling MacBook Airs on Facebook and they messaged me to tell me that they had a MacBook Air from 2017 and it didn't work anymore and they were wondering if I was interested in buying it. And I had a look at it and physically it's actually in exceptionally good condition. Um, you know, the corners are round as opposed to being crushed in. Physically, it, yeah, it seems all good. Uh, I think my face here is just a little bit too big. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to change this. Uh, there we go. It's going to change, unfortunately, when I switch scenes again. Hey, Ed, Josh, James, Barry, Arnold, Jose. No, no, no. So anyway, um, the only physical defect that I have noticed on it is that the clutch cover is cracked, split through. And you can see here. So hopefully that is not a um, sign of a dead screen. I'm hoping it was just a bit of bad luck. Oh, and there's a little bit of a dingle there. But really, so far as 1466 is, again, there's a dingle there. Great. The more I look at it, the more that <laughs> overall it seems to be in pretty good condition, but it just doesn't seem to do anything. So we'll plug in a um, chipmunk and we'll power up the power supply, but looks like I've actually disconnected it for other jobs. Let's fix that up. Set us up at 18 volts. No. Okay, 18 volts. Hey, Miles, I did get your email, by the way. I just just keep forgetting to get back to you on that. But I will need to. Okay, so we get MagSafe. All right, it flashed up there for an instant. So I'm going to say we might have a big fat short circuit if we're lucky. And it seems to be cycling. Yeah, so I'd say if we're lucky, we've got a big fat short. Alright, let's get this thing open. Well, Miles, I've got to try and remember at some point, because otherwise what will happen is after a week I'll forget that it even was sent, and then uh, it will just become one of many tens of thousands of emails that I've probably never responded to. So I do need to get my act together. Hey, Alexi. Hey, Paul Howes. Is that everything? Yeah, uh, it's got a Samsung drive in it. No. Oh well. Can't all be winners. So this is a 165 board. You can tell by the fact that, immediately tell by the fact that it's got this compact JTAG header in it. Okay. Let's see if I can spot the big fat short, whatever it is, straight up. Nothing visually. Can't see any big fat exploded caps. Mm, all right, that's fine. Let's get this thing apart. Okay. 
True, better than no drive, I suppose. Yes, quite right. Would have been nice if it was a Toshiba or what's that other brand? Mastec, is it? I can't remember. But yeah, there's the other brand which is really nice to have. It is slower though, which is probably why we don't see them on these newer machines. And this is a 128 gig. So it's pretty standard. We are going to write CTPC on this so that I know it's mine and not someone else's. Display looks good. All right, let's just get this thing out and have a look. I don't mind taking the trip to Townsville to pick up you know, these broken MacBooks. So long as I do other things while I'm down there, you know, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit excessive of a drive just for one machine. It's a 300 kilometer round trip at least, and it does wear you out. Contrary to the opinion of many people, I actually will be very happy to have automated cars when it comes to these sort of highway trips. It's fun driving if it's something that's changing and you know, you're actively, actively driving, but when you're just sitting behind the wheel and just making sure you don't fall off the highway, it does get a little monotonous over the course of multiple hours. For that sort of thing, um, I think automated driving would be very nice. I've got plenty of other things I could do in those three hours. Tough one. Yeah, Alexa, you've been keeping busy, been working a lot on Flexboard View and open board data. I just realized I need to take the battery out, it makes it easier for a few other things. Miles, more chance of you killing yourself because of driving than a would have made a car in my opinion. That or other people. Particularly on the roads around here. Okay, again, we're right on this. So we know it's ours. Like when I was driving today, there was a person who was sort of they wanted to get past me, but they were in a 4x4, you know, a larger, older type 4x4, so they didn't quite have the power to really zip past me in a hurry, so they had to have a bit of a long run-up. And anyway, when they finally got the opportunity to do so, what they didn't see is that another 4x4 behind them, a um, Toyota Land Cruiser Trayback, with a P-Plater, which is a provisional licensed person, in other words, a young, cocky, idiotic male, and so the slower older 4x4 pulls out, starts trying to get past me at exactly the same time that the cocky young P plater in his uh, Toyota Land Cruiser flatback was also trying to pass. And so we ended up having a three car wide situation on a narrow two lane uh, highway scenario. And I was half expecting to see this dust plume behind me as the two of them just got into a massive wreck. Fortunately, they didn't, but it was pretty bloody close. But that is the sort of mentality that I'm dealing with around here when it comes to driving. And we've got a freaking great big fat short of corrosion on the back here. Arnold G, 
It seems like you're trying to create a bit of an innuendo there. But, uh, and I'm sorry to say, but if they had crashed and burned like that, I probably wouldn't have really been too upset. Because these guys with their land cruisers, they are... It's... Yeah, I'm not trying to... Uh, how can you say be prejudiced but 99% um, of the time that particular combination of car particularly if it's got a p-plate on it is usually a driver you don't want to be around <laughs> all right let's have a look at this all right so our holy dooly our HS 105 is completely and utterly cactus now these are these are rural blokes, by the way, young fellas. So they're rough, tough, and they like their loud four-wheel drives and rolling coal and things like that. But they're absolute fucking morons when it comes to driving properly. They think they're the greatest drivers in the world. They think they're so cool. But um, more often than not, when there's an accident around this area, it's one of them. And they never learn because they always look at whoever's had the accident they go oh yeah that was that guy was an idiot he didn't know how to drive i can drive better and so no one really learns the lesson well it looks like it's predominantly the hs105 that's at fault here so we can fix that up yeah andre it's pretty similar there yeah. you guys have the utes we have the land cruisers and yeah they've usually got two spare alloy wheels on the back of the you know, on the back tray, and then they've got all the other accessories and the bull bars and the recovery winches and all that crap on their car that they never use. And you can tell it's never used because it's in absolute pristine condition. Whereas the legitimate people who actually do use their vehicles, um, you know, accordingly, whatever, yeah, it's got a bit of wear and tear on it. You can see it's been used for the real thing, and it's not all bling bling. Man, anyway, nothing you can do with these people. You just got to let them go, and hopefully they'll probably die without taking out an innocent person. That's the problem, though. Because more often than not, they take out someone who doesn't need to be taken out, and that's the tragedy. Yeah, Miles, that's exactly it. Yep, the innocent people are the ones that suffer and die. Hey, Michael Billman. It looks like it was a spillage of some sort. I'm a little worried that this corrosion is quite extensive. It may have actually eaten through the tracks. Now this particular chip is quite hard to get off under normal circumstances. There's a lot of thermal mass here. There we go. Ooh, that doesn't look too good for me. Yeah. That is a little bit gnarly. Scrub it back with some 80-20. Yeah, uh, that corrosion has gone in pretty deep. Okay, we do have a, maybe just enough connectivity there. Mm. 
So the trouble is, that goes to a veer, which may, like I said, it goes, this is part of the PCH power lines. So that could be a problem. Not much of that left. I think this one here is going to be the real issue because I can see that it's corroded through the veer itself. That's never good. I haven't had a haircut, I've only had a face facial cut. I do need a haircut to follow up though. Otherwise I just look like another mullet wearing yobbo from the outback. Still it does mean I can walk around downtown in plain sight and no one will recognise that I'm not one of them. Yeah, that V is... Okay, we've got a bit of copper there. It might be viable. You can't always tell. Sometimes you just get a bit of uncorroded copper, but you scratch out a little more and it vanishes away. So there's no guarantee it's the top of the rest of the stalk that uh, is viable. Yeah. And I can see a second issue here. There's a veer that's under that cap, just there. So yeah, we've got two veers to deal with. That one looks slightly intact, but probably not enough, really. We'll have to probably dig down and grab a hold of that as well, or find another place for it. No, I do not use acetone on machines. Acetone is far too eager to chomp away at plastic, so I prefer not to have it anywhere near anything I actually care to restore. Hey, Deppum. What are you going to be live streaming? What are you repairing this time? What oh, piece of test equipment? Yeah, Mike, I'm just, I just don't take the risk. I don't take the risk because I just don't know. It only has to be that one time that you get it wrong and acetone has chomped away. And I don't find it cleaning that significantly more effective to warrant the risk for me personally. I mean, for other people, they want to take that risk. That's their choice. But I personally prefer not to. That is a nice thing, at least, about running your own workshop. You can choose what risk factors you want to take. OK, so this is HS105 up here. Don't need that. So what have we got? Okay, PP5VSO is the one that is corroded out. And that's a little bit of a problem because, well, it's not massively, but, you know, the closest connections are over here. So it's not a simple, quick and easy short jump. And the other 
connection is yeah, it looks like that's a ground one is it that doesn't make okay if we're lucky that one that is just here that one there might be a ground kind of interesting they route it that way I guess this is all an active plane here this is all what is it pp1v05 okay so all the copper that you can see in this area that's 1v05 and so that's why this one here goes down into the board because it wants to get over to wherever the hell ground is it's sort of a um it's a flood island so they can get minimal resistance but yeah so not all flood copper areas are ground don't ever look at f a board and go oh look it's a flooded copper area it must be ground it's <laughs> it's not always the case okay how easy was your multimeter buzzer upgrade um it wasn't too bad to be honest uh, yeah we'll we'll have a quick chat about that basically this is this is the unit that was in there and it's like a 12 mil and the important thing about this one is that it's a self excited buzzer so that is you just put power onto it and it buzzes whereas almost all of the buzzers that I personally carry are externally excited ones so you have to drive them with a square wave or something like that fortunately at some point in the past I had bought myself these 12 volt pigtail piezo piezo whatever um, you can tell they're piezo by the nature of the um, element in there anyway so these are 12 volt and you can see how old they must be because uh, the paper edges have been eaten by silverfish now anyway so it's got pigtails and I just soldered the pigtails into the board and it does work pretty good so we'll um, see if you guys can hear the difference at least we'll just see whether we've got ground on that particular uh, via there that we were looking at just going to untangle my leads okay. that was the uh, soldering iron not so yeah because it's distinctly louder so let's pick a ground point okay so we do have an active ground connection there and this one here is 1v5 I'm just trying to find where I can pick that up again okay what? so where now? okay so there okay all right so it is a, it is active but it's going to be a bit of a dig yeah I re <laughs> it was impossible to hear it i definitely couldn't hear it more often than not i would imagine that i was hearing it than actually hearing it now at least i can hear it now the only concern i have is i don't know what the milliamp loading is going to be on the meter circuitry but I can't imagine it's too much and I did see that there was a current limiting resistor on the pin to that uh, positive line so hopefully fingers crossed it doesn't destroy my meter I also mounted it in the same area so that the you know the um, piezo didn't create any sort of unwanted induced effects it shouldn't as far as I can tell It'd be different if it was magnetic one, but anyway, we'll see. I haven't had a chance to check out whether its um, precision is being affected or not. I do have some equipment for that, though, simple stuff, but we'll see. All right, so we've got a double dig and a rebuild. Hopefully this will work.
I said, Defan, what you do? Picked up a J Beauty 1200 station, uh, basically JVC copy. Heats up about two, three seconds of cold. Okay. There's one of those ones that look like a JBC as well. I see a fair number of those around the place. Oh, nearly ruined my micro pencil tip. I hate it when you're trying to clean the tip of the iron, you know, by jabbing it into the brass ball and you misjudge and you end up smacking it into the edge of the container that the brass ball is in. It's not a good thing to do. And these are not cheap, not cheap tips. And they're not the most expensive in the world, but they're certainly not the cheapest. We're just getting some assistive heat here. Try and clear up the corrosion. I don't want to rub too hard. I don't want to accidentally lift things. Okay. I'm just going to go at that again with the knife. Scratch back some more of that black oxidization. Once the solder gets in and actually manages to grab a foothold within that black oxidization area, then it usually clears out the rest pretty quickly, but you've got to get it in there first. You can actually see the trace for that one, um, that line, and see this sort of blackish end. So it's probably going up over here and then down somewhere. That's actually quite clear. Trying to dig out a bit of a 
recess around that beer. Trouble is, it feels like the veer is crumbling away as I go at it. And it doesn't have a lot of physical durability. And that's what I was worried about before, is that even though you can get the continuity on it, and you can see it looks like bright copper, it's often still okay there we go we finally see how that's taken on its uh, it's attached itself to the view and it looks like a proper attachment you know it's not just a yeah see it's forming a nice ball there now so that's good hey Keith hello And I've ordered myself one of those um, rosin vape machine things, which, yeah, they're basically just cigarette vape things. Okay, it looks like we lost the top of that um, solder, so maybe I was wrong. Hmm, weird. I actually thought that was attached and it felt like it was, but according to the fact that there's no longer solder on there, it says nay. Hey old mate Greg, how's it going? That's right, I'm the magician reincarnated. It was a great trick. a battle. I could put some solder paste down there and see if that brings it up. What does everyone think about the Apple going through client photos? Now, that's an interesting thing. Now, I'm going to guess that I haven't read any details about it. I've just sort of seen various headlines. But I'm going to guess what they're doing is they're applying some sort of algorithm to the image to get some sort of hash of the image. Kind of like an MD5 or um, SHA, uh, whatever hash. But the kind of hash that it will be will be one that's more for image identification comparison purposes. So it'll be a bit of a, um, how could you say, a, a fuzzy hash, as it were. And so I'm going to guess that that's what's getting back, going to be sent back to Apple. I don't believe, obviously, Apple will actually see any photos. They'll only get the hashes. But even still, for a company that basically pictures their device as being one that will secure you right or wrong from government access 
I feel like they may have stepped kind of over the line here under the guise of protecting children. It's one of those sacred cow things where, you know, if someone pulls up the whole think of the children, then you're not allowed to have any counter argument to that. And I think, yeah, fair, you know, yes, we, we need to resolve that sort of uh, criminality. But I think that the kind of stepping over a line that maybe they shouldn't. It's an ethical debate. But like I said, I don't believe that Apple will be getting access to the photos directly. They would probably have to get a warrant to be able to then get access based on the fact that there were hash, um, what do you call it, hash matches or similar enough hash matches. The real problem is going to be what is considered similar enough. You know, what's the threshold? What's the algorithm? And I bet you, I bet you a bunch of money that they're not going to tell you what the algorithm is. Yeah, it's probably a bit like drag. Yeah, they basically. I don't want to say they're getting lazy solving the problem because I understand that, you know, there is only a certain amount of resources that can be brought to bear on these particular tasks. And they're like, well, what's something we can do to make it easier for us to find the criminals doing this sort of stuff? And they go, hey, you know, why don't we just do this sort of uh, hash testing? And we'll pick out all the criminals. So I get what they're trying to do but I think it may end up causing a lot more harm than it actually saves but of course again the people say isn't it worth to save the life of one or to save one child and it's like oh, okay that's a slippery slope that no one really wants to get in onto have a look at Lewis's video well you actually think I've got time to watch videos well, that's that's cute. Actually, I, I do. Okay, I just realised I'm going to have to run a wire from. I thought this pad would actually protrude enough, but it doesn't. So I'm going to have to run a wire before I do anything. The other problem is that, yes, we may save some children, but I suspect we're actually going to cause damage to a lot more. There are going to be kids being stupid kids. Well, I shouldn't say stupid kids. Kids being kids. And they're going to be sharing photos that they probably shouldn't be sharing. But, you know, people, you go through dumb phases in your life and you do dumb things. And there are going to be a lot of kids doing dumb things that are going to get caught out by this and they're going to basically have to deal with that whole confessional type scenario. Uh, it's going to ruin a lot of lives that it shouldn't have. That's what I'm worried about. You're going to end up saving one and destroying many, many others. Yeah, sexting stuff, you know. And it's it's a bit like the whole trying to stop kids having, um, yeah, the, what was it, Nancy Reagan, was it? Trying to stop kids having sex by just telling them not to do it or whatever, whatever that was. I can't remember the pitch. And I was like, yeah, that's it. Great in theory, but in reality, you're not going to stop that stuff. We're all generally boundary pushers when we're kids. That's how we learn, unfortunately. Some of us make it, some of us do not. Oh, it was drugs, was it? Who, who was the one that did the um, just say no to sex thing? I know it was one of them. Was it Hillary? Ah, shite. 
I'm pretty sure, yeah, that just pulled that. Oh, we might be able to actually save that. We might stomp that down and then give it a bunch of paste or something. Worst case scenario, I'll just have to edge bond it. Hillary said that. <laughs> no. No, I'm pretty sure someone had it and like I said, it was one of those feel-good campaigns that just doesn't pan out in reality because humans are humans and if there's one thing we're designed for, it's doinking each other. So, <laughs> yeah, good luck stopping that. Actually, maybe it was one of the... Actually, come to think of it, maybe it was Hazel Hawk in Australia. Hazel Hawk. It might have been her who tried that. Which was Bob Hawk's wife, of course. Ah, damn it, Paul. You're making a train wreck of this today, as usual. Yeah, JCT for for um, young people. Yeah, just absence, just absentee, or whatever the hell you. I can't even say it. My body refuses to say it properly. Practice abstinence. It's, oh yeah, it's like that's totally going to work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I need some solder paste. Not a lot, just a little. Hey, you know, some truck money, hey. You've been, you've been bad, Anel, and starting to come up behind trucks and sniffing them again. You know it's bad for your health, right? Don't sniff trucks. Anyway, getting back to the original point, fundamentally I think that this seems like it's a good idea on the very thinnest of surface will probably end up causing a hell of a lot of damage to people who was just simply being young, dumb and full of fun and doing stupid things and then having a yeah, Dragging someone through that process, you know, having to get them to detail everything and explain everything and having all their stuff put out in public, it destroys people. And for what? I mean, I can't get it, but you know what I mean? It's like, it's disproportionate. Okay, for some reason that's not attacking onto the wire, so I'll have to resolve that. The least the nice thing about getting high on carbon monoxide is when you do eventually get splattered, it stays very pretty for a long time. It's one of the I shouldn't say beautiful things, but it's one of the things with carbon monoxide is it makes your blood stay very bright red for quite a long time after death. Hey, 3X. Although these days, most people know that anyway.
I'm at the wrong angle, but I'm still going to do it. Mother flipper. And what did I say about being at the wrong angle? It allows you to less OB. Now I'm just going to have to get another one of those. I am not going to find that cap until it's shorting out something after I've put it through an ultrasonic clean, reassembled it, and sold it off to someone. And it is finally at that moment after it has been sold to someone that it will reveal itself. Good thing I've got a lot of donors. I suspect also Apple's thinking they'll get around with it. Well, yeah, I'm not even sure Apple wanted to do this. They might have been under duress for some reason. Which is moderately unlikely, but you never know. Maybe the feds have got something on Apple. That's more like it. Just trying to get some heat soak in so that the veer really bites on. Hopefully that's good. Apple wants to do it now for other purposes down the road. Oh yeah, I mean that's always so true. They're gonna have to go for a different marketing pitch now though. And you know that officially they won't uh, abuse it, but you know behind the scenes they're going to be maximizing the use of it now that they've been coerced. That's the other thing, they could actually have been wanting it, but were waiting for the feds to coerce them into doing it, and then said fine, 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 and then, yeah. Then they can say, hey, it wasn't our fault, we got forced. I am not going to touch that little bobble out of solder there. I think that would be asking the devil to come and knock me in the head. But we will check to see if we've got proper ground continuity. Sorry, have I got MBN issues on my end or Jim's end? Evening, Ted Berry. Okay, so we're going to do a ground test. Oh man, it's great. I can actually, it's great that I can hear that. I don't know why they put such an anemic buzzer in the meter in the first place. I mean, really. Okay, good. Both connections are good now. Let me see if we can get a some kind of a boot. Yeah, we we don't have a beeping meter. I got to say, as fast as that meter is on the continuity beep, it is still not as fast as these meters that I'm going to be giving out to people. So 
the ones that I've got for people who actually actually I'll go get one. I'll, I'll be back in a second. Just give me a minute. All right. Okay, so this is the B-side ADM20, which someone sent to me a long time ago. I do wish I could remember who it was that sent it to me. If you're here on the chat, let me know. I can never remember until you tell me, and then I remember. These are the Duratool version, and they're essentially they're the same meter, really. They just repackage it in different things. And these are the ones that I'm going to be sending out for people to do open board data uh, capture with. Now, these are actually, I really like these meters. You know, they're not the fanciest, but I do like them. The nice things are, and it applies to all variations of it, as in all brandings. The stand is pretty solid. The real winner on this is that you can do the change of the setting without your meter going blunk or blunk. The... O1 B35 that I had before, you do that, the meter falls over. This one, it does not. And now the continuity on this is just so fast. So, okay, that's continuity mode. Yeah, it's pretty much starts beeping before you realize it's you know, made the contact. So um, I do like them. And the USB port on them is the mini port. It's not the micro port, so it's actually robust. It will survive if you know, it gets knocked and things like that. One thing I did find that was interesting is that these ones run at 2400 BPS, um, 8 N1, yeah, 8 bits, no parity, one stop. And I could not get my software to work with these ones, and I thought it was a different protocol. But then I noticed that all the values that were coming out were actually pretty low. There wasn't much going above around about, um, uh, what is it, 8, sort of 8, 8 or 8F on the hex data. And then I realized it was, this actually runs at 9600 BPS. So it was an interesting change between the two models. Anyway, so these are what I'm sending out along with uh, some keyboard, finger keyboards to make it easy to like capture, capture, capture. And I'll also be sending along good quality leads, which is going to be this set, the Hirschman set, which allows you to then to plug in you know, the good quality, uh, what do you call it, you know, alligator clips so you can get a proper grounding on your board, things like that. These probes, they're the usual trash probes. Don't trust them for the one moment. They're good for nothing really other than taking up precious packing space. The other nice thing is that these use four AA batteries and you can put rechargeables in there so you will not run out every week like you do when you have a 9 volt battery in there. So it definitely makes a good meter all around. I'm pretty happy with them. They're not the cheapest but they're also not the most expensive and I've got a whole bunch of them and I've just got to find the people that will do the data capture for me. And we'll go from there. Still working on it, still working on it. Anyway, now we've got to see if this will actually start. That. Anonymous repair. No, we still we still got issues. What are we drawing? Twenty six. Ah, that's not great. 
It kind of looks like we almost went backwards now. Well, that suckity sucks. We could well have and surely have a dead PCH on this. It's working now? No, it's not. Okay, what's it doing there? Come back. It's kind of all over the place. Okay, yeah, maybe we do have another short somewhere. It's trying to go through the rails. Ah, I'm an idiot. The missing little piece? What do you mean by the missing little piece? Did I forget to do something on there? There's a bit of junk there. I should actually check the state of the PCH die. You tried soldering on Oh no no, I, I rebuilt that. Yeah, I've, I've already rebuilt that bit. It's going to be unfortunate if this turns out to be just a donor board, but yeah, these things do sometimes happen. Okay, the die looks intact, and I can't see any sort of deforming on it, so it's a good sign. The hidden cap, well there is that one, yes, that's a concern. But yeah, you can see there's no deforming on that die, so that's good. And I can't see any cracking, and then it has a hair. Cracking or little brown marks on it, so that's good. Interesting that we're getting intermittent on the SMC as well. Travis, theoretically that cap shouldn't cause, the chances of it causing problems are minimal, being a cap and all, but you never know, you never know how jaded the universe wants to be to me at the moment. What I find interesting is that it sort of seems rather unpredictable on the start. That is to say, it 
kind of looks like it's ramping up and then it changes mind and then it twitches and it changes its mind and it's rather all over the place Oh dear god no, never use a short killer on boards. The trouble with short killers is that more often than not you'll probably end up blowing a trace rather than the part and that trace may actually be important. That's booting now. Current's a little low, but it's not super low, but it is booting. No, yeah, it's alive. <laughs> that, maybe that cap was actually in the way. <laughs> All right, so let's try to put the heat sick back on before we do any further testing. Other than that, or what we have is a fault in the PCH or the CPU, and in the process of removing the heatsink, we've you know, warped the board a little bit or shifted things around, and subsequently whatever was broken through before now is making a connection, and this will become one of the dreaded intermittent boards. But we'll see, we'll see. Maybe I'll keep this one for myself since it's so perfect. Brushed off corrosion. I don't think so because I couldn't see any other major corrosion anywhere or any. So um, it could have also been that TPS5 or well, whatever chip was. I've got to learn to test these things before I. Yeah, one at a time rather than doing a block of things and then testing because then I don't know what actually fixed it. A hey, pro engineer, what's a hypercube? Hmm. Right, let's see. Current's good. It is staying on. But we haven't got a green blink yet, so that's a problem. Yeah, we've got some weird issues going on here. Oh no, there we go. No, this took a little longer than I would have expected. So we'll put this back into the chassis and it'll actually give us an opportunity to see whether that screen is functional or not. By the way, if you are anywhere in the world and you would like to be involved in the Open Board Data Project, then send me an email, let me know where in the world you are and you know what part of the packaging do you need, do you meet a flex board view um, sort of thing. Basically as far as I'm going I'm basically just you know giving everybody the complete package but uh, you do need to have access to boards, known good boards and you do need to be willing to produce at least one board worth of um, board data. Yeah. Obviously I can't just go and give this out to anyone willy-nilly. I've only got a certain amount of funding. So it does need to go to people who are going to be willing to put the time in to produce board data. Now I suppose realistically what, what's the worst that's going to happen? What, you know, if you don't produce any data, well what, I can't exactly take it back. I can nullify the flex board view license, but that's about it. But I figure if each person that gets one does at least one board that we don't already have, or maybe does a second pass on one of the known boards, 
like say 165 so that we can get more data diversity then yeah that would be good we're not expecting the world here but we certainly would hope that people would have some sense of obligation and do their best to produce useful data because you know everybody if everybody chips in then we do get to have a greater community resource which is what we want to make it easier for repairs hey you're Numara. I thought it would be a bit late for you, but good to see you. Alright, I can't believe it. I've got three of these sticks and none of them have... Okay, you're a 32, so unlikely. You're a 64, so probably unlikely. You're a 128. I'm pretty sure you do actually have data on you. Can't sleep. Too cold, too hot, too unwell. I hope not the latter. Hey Mark, just saw you there. Now of course this is being, at least in theory, being funded by Lewis Rossman, Rossman Repair. I'm just simply acting as the middleman. But of course you know, I've got to do all the software development, I've got to yeah, all that sort of stuff. Okay, the screen's a little bit dingy now that I'm looking at it, but nothing a bit of a clean up can't fix. Too much crap in the head. Uh, okay, that's not good. Okay, we've got a bong, so that's a damn good start. Interesting. Nothing on that stick. Okay, I'll go to the other room and get a known working stick. Let's try this stick. Okay, so that's good. USB works. Yeah, a bong is best, not a ding or a pfft noise. When you hear the pfft, it's, it's really bad news. Ah, Mark, right, okay. Well, glad at least I caught up with you again. Yeah, nice that the screen is not broken, but I will have to change that clutch cover. I'm curious to see what the specs of this machine are going to be now. Uh, Rodrigo, what uh, what's the import fees? I mean, if it's given to you as a like a charity gift, does that still attract import fees? The actual physical va the value of the physical items would be around about 120, 150 US dollars. Okay, the hinges are a bit sloppy. Hmm, you have to fix that up. Battery is at 100%. That's interesting. Okay. I guess I must have had it on charge. About this Mac. And the winner is... A 1.8 gigahertz i5 with 8 gigs of RAM. That's pretty good going. 1.8 i5. Um, let's see. Do you get the i7s on the MacBook Airs? I can't remember. And it is a 2017 model, so that's good. And you have the 8 gigs, 1.8. It's a pretty good machine. Yeah. So I would say I came out for the winner this time. Hallelujah. Oops, and I just stopped the fan with my big fat finger. Start again, little fan. Start again. Oh, there it goes. Yep. There is a 2.2i7. Ooh, okay. So I've not quite fully peaked. But still, 1.8i5. That's certainly no slouch. And I'm happy that it's got the 8 gigs. Well, 27 to 8 gigs. Alright then. Well, I'm happy. So I paid, I paid 200 Australian for this. And if I fix it up and everything then I could probably get rid of it for 400 
Shut down. Yes, I did get the SSD. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, the only reason why I'm not plugging it in is because I don't actually want to reveal whoever it is because obviously their data is going to be on there. They did ask me to erase it. So obviously I'm going to respect that and not just shower it all over the internet for everybody to perv on. Okay. So that's that there, that's that one. Alright, so it's a win. I'm happy. Even though it was a three hour round trip drive, it looked like it worked out. Obviously I'm going to have to ultrasonic that board. But we can do that tomorrow because the ultrasonic machine is all cold at the moment and it's a cold night, so it's not going to heat up in time. Just stick this in my to do another decade pile. Okay, what else is okay, what's our next thing for tonight? Ah uh, yes, I have to change some VRMs. How we all love to change VRMs. We don't. Make sure I actually have enough. Nothing worse than getting going to replace some VRMs only find you do not have enough. Looks like I'm going to have to make another order, but I do have enough for two more machines and that's it. Unfortunately, this was a case of a machine that I thought had been fixed. I put it all back together after doing everything, <laughs> only to find that it decided, no, nope, it's not fixed. I was like, damn, 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 damn. I hate it when you go through all the reassembly just to find out you were wrong. Yeah, th these are the FDM 3030s, FDM D 3030, whatever. We all know I know what ever. doesn't help that it takes a while to disassemble these ones either. I mean, it's certainly not a you know, 1706 or similar type machine where you have way too many screws. And at least it's not a um, 820-0700 with all the damn little FPC connectors. That is just a madness of a machine that is not sure why Apple did it that way either. Maybe they did it to just mess with us. Rather rude of them. What's that Pedro? What are you saying about alphanumerics? Were you saying just because I said thirty thirty and nothing else, or what? Uh, this is a uh, thirty-seven eighty-seven board, A two zero thirty-seven eighty-seven. Have I got that on there? Yeah, I have. Yeah. It's not the most common board for me to encounter, 
I seem to either get the triple three twos or I get the one three eight, one six four, four two six type ones. Not so often I get the yeah, thirty seven series. Hey, Jessica. Oh, damn. Uh, okay. I think the one thing I hate about doing the VRMs is the fact that you sully up the board so much. Right, can't remember, yeah, well, I sort of do, but I just don't care. So I guess your point stands. Son of a son of an SOB. So much for that. I just slap them down. I uh, don't bother trying to take the old solder off or anything, just a bit of flux and set the new ones down. I found I usually ran into more grief trying to put on the lead-free solder than just going with what's on there. But I do find I like to shave off this glue because it uh, really gets nasty when it starts getting hot. Uh, that's interesting. That. Oh, it's a recess. That's weird. I, I couldn't... I thought that was actually popping out, but it's not. It's recessed. Uh, that was just downright weird. Kind of funny, considering under the stereo microscope, I shouldn't have fallen for that. I'm surprised you haven't done one by now, Pedro. Would have thought by now you would have encountered some 138s with this issue. Yeah, this polyurethane type glue does not like... It doesn't smell good when you cook it. Well, Mike Sims, I actually don't know for sure that this is going to be a problem fixed by changing the VRMs. However, almost inevitably, the VRM should be changed on these boards anyway. But essentially what's happening is it bongs, but then it won't fully boot. Or you can get it to boot um, to a screen, but if it's an external screen as opposed to an internal. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So the intermittent nature of it makes me err towards, and the fact that it's a known signature issue with these particular VRMs. It's no big issue if I damage one of these coils, I can just swap it out with another one. Funnily enough, the coils are easier to swap than the VRM chips.
is that you don't have to scrape this glue off at all. You can choose to just come in and burn the living daylights out of it. Turn it to charcoal. That's your choice. Your workshop, your choice. My workshop, I choose to do it this way. Something people got to learn, I think, is you know, everybody has their way of doing things. Unless it's truly a dumb way of doing things and it does more damage than it fixes. In that case, then, yeah, you're going to get called out. Jessica, you got the kitty inside. Oh, good. That's excellent. I'm very pleased to hear that. Hopefully she doesn't have too many kittens, but I wish you the best of luck if she does have quite a few. We've been through that process ourselves numerous times, and it's it's very hard, uh, particularly when it's a stray or you know one you're not familiar with. And then it's even harder when you've actually got to work out, well, what am I going to do with all these kittens? But I wish you the very best. Yeah, Mike, it, um, that could well be the VRMs then. And it's not necessarily when it's under load. Sometimes it's, it's more when you're transitioning loads. So you go from, say, a high load scenario and you drop into a low load situation, then the VRM botches up and boom, it drops down. Now, I do also use a metal shield on these. Yeah, some people go, you don't need a metal shield. You're wasting your time with a metal shield. But again, my workshop, my choices. And I choose, choose, choose to have a shield. Sorry, I know I'm spending a lot of time fiddling around here, but with this particular process, I do like to be prepped. I just noticed something here. Yeah. Sorry. I just realized that metallic bar, it's not normally attached. It normally stays on the adhesive thing that we took off but I'll just get it off because it's just going to make a train wreck of everything there we go because what would have happened there is that it would start to fragment and so you would end up with all these little bits of um, little metallic flakes like glitter all over the place hey look there's that cap there's that cap Hello, you're trying to take out board number two. Ha! <laughs> nice try, buddy. You're out of here. That was way too much flux according to Paul in the New York. Oh well. I would tend to agree. Mind you, this it, look, there's already that flaking that I'm talking about. Yeah, so that's why you really didn't want that thing there. It doesn't hurt to take a little bit of time to warm this board up because you are going to be doing quite a few, well three of them. And it is better if the board is warm 
because you're going to have a little bit of a time delay between grabbing this off, getting the next one, and putting it down. So you kind of don't want it to go super cold in a hurry. You, you want to have some, we want to be able to just drop the new one in, give it a little bit of a heating, and then have it come up, yeah, go sit down. Paul's speech is all over the place because he's thinking. Okay, there we go, so that's numero uno. Drop some fresh flux on there. In violation of the Paul principle. Verify that you've got the pads orientation correct. Try to lock it in. Don't do dumb shit like I just did then. It's not properly aligned now, so that was bad. Which means I'm going to have to knock it. There we go. Grab that solder ball now. Because they are a major pain to get rid of afterwards. Okay, so that's set, that one. Let's go to our next one. Yeah, I had to bump it at Oh, what do you mean when I was putting it down originally? I also don't want to pop those caps sitting there. Close, we're close. Almost keep forgetting to put the flux down, that's bad. Ah, my finger is playing the devil on me. Okay, confirmed. It is a little skew, but hopefully it should come around. That was nightmarish, but it actually came back alright. It is a little skew, but I think it's good enough. Alright, this last one is actually quite the pain to do because you've got this sucker So you do end up usually melting the edge of the plastic a little bit. But what you kind of hope for in this scenario is that the board has warmed up a pretty good amount. So you don't have to sit here for too long waiting for it. You've got to watch out also, actually come to think of it, I'll fix this before I cause the problem again. We'll take that screw out. I almost always forget until it's too late. <laughs> if you don't take that screw out, what usually happens is you just about to lift the chip and that um, CPU retainer uh, spring metal pops off and ruins everything for you. You'll do it a couple of times and then you'll remember not to.
There is a, oh no, it's the natural indent on that one. Verified. Shite. have gone on me. Okay. Let's see if we can just get to sit down like this. My hands have started to shake too much. Uh, Steve B, in my tools page, it will have the details for the camera. It's not the cheapest of cameras, but I am very happy with it. But I think also the other important thing is I've got now I've got an HDMI capture card, a proper four port PCIe sort of thing. And that's for both the vertical one, which by the way, this is a uh, this is contributed by Jim. It's a 4K Panasonic camera. I think it was Panasonic. It's a 4K camera. It's a good brand. It's got a beautiful optical zoom on it. And it's HDMI output. So I'm just cooling the board off now. Thank you, Jimbo. Wait, 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 wait. And hopefully we haven't wrecked the board. That's always the drama with this particular job is that you can wreck things. But at the same time, unless you do it, you can't fix it. So it's one of those things you just got to pull your pants up and try and do it. Okay, so now I'm going to go and check the edges of those chips. There are some areas where they can be bridged and there are some areas where they most certainly cannot be bridged. Okay. okay that's good. As long as you've got distinctly separated little solder blobs, notice I avoided certain word there, you should be good. I have a hard enough time dealing with the YouTube algorithm without having to say words I want to say but get penalized for them. Steve, I would love to be able to get more sleep, but it is an extremely rare commodity around here. Even if I try to get to sleep, it doesn't always work. Half the problem is that my brain, you know, ever since I was in my early teens, I've always been a night owl, but that's not something that you can't change. But the other problem is that at around about four to four, five in the morning the fur kids become absolute lunatics as anyone who has a bunch of cats will know and you do not sleep during that period of time so you combine that with the fact that I go to sleep at maybe two and then you have this circus going on at let's say 4 30 you've only picked up two and a half hours there so yeah it's it's pretty hard to pick up proper sleep the only real solution here is well there's a couple one I lock the fur kids out of the room when I sleep 
but my anxiety plays up because I like to know that they can come in if they need to, you know, if there's something going on. Second is the other option is if I go to bed at maybe a reasonable hour, like 11 o'clock at night. That at least would give me, you know, four to five hours of sleep before the circus begins. So I think that may end up having to be what I have to do. All right. Uh, and if, by the way, if you want to the zoom on this camera, so you can. And that was our limit. There we go. So you can appreciate the quality of this camera, the optical zoom on it. It's very nice. What we need to improve around here uh, the, uh, is the lighting. That'll be in the next budget. Okay. So here we go. Okay, well, we immediately got a green blink, so that's good, but we do want to see if it actually continues on. Because what will often happen is this will bong and that will be the end of it. It won't boot after the bong. So we need to see that it does a few more blinky blinks. Okay, so that's a good sign. We've got blinks at that point. What it was doing previously is it would give the initial blink or blink or two and then it would just sit there looking like a stunned mullet. You usually compensate with a whole bunch of coffee. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, which is, of course, not the greatest thing. There is only so far you can take that on your body. And, you know, approaching 50, I try to be a little bit better with myself, which means I probably won't, but I'll try. I think the odd thing for me at this point in life is that I now have... I was obviously old enough when I was growing up to know when my parents turn 50. And so I'm sitting here and I'm comparing what they were doing at this sort of time compared to what I'm doing. And they were they were so much further along than what I have. <laughs> they, they, were, they were mature and responsible adults. Me, I'm just this kid in a 50 year old body and I don't seem to be doing mature and responsible things very much. I mean, I'll keep the, I'll keep the work in, you know, I'll make the money, but in terms of things that you sort of expect adults to do, I'm not really doing so well in that department. I'm just running around like I'm still just fresh out of school. Okay, I am happily married for 20 years, so that's got to count for something. I think it does. Like, I think back on the projects that my father worked on, like when he was, it would have been 30, uh, mid-30s, he was up in flipping Jabiru being a foreman for the Ranger uranium mine and building these great processing plants and stuff like that. And then after that, we went off to Taronga in um, southeast Queensland, and that was a coal mine. And then there was all the gold mines up here. Yeah, he's doing all this stuff in his 30s and 40s. And it's, you know, they go out there and they turn a bit of dry, dusty land into this great complex. So, yeah. And I look back at that and I think, what do I do? Sit here and I tinker on electronics. So it's a little hard to feel, feel as in F-I-L-L, -L, that sort of, um, how could you say that sort of monumental type achievements. All my stuff is more software and little bits of electronics and things like that. So, yeah, you, you can sort of start to doubt your success in some ways. All right, well, maybe if this boots, I'll feel a bit better. Let's see, we do need to have the battery on these. Well, don't need to, but it helps a lot. Funny enough, Steve, I don't see any problem with people being single. But it is funny how you get subjected to people, society's expectations, I suppose. Like people say, why don't I have kids? Why the hell, why don't I have grandkids at this age? 
And it's just like, I really just don't like children. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to be mean to children, but I'm, as far as, like, yeah, children, I've never considered myself to be a person who wants a child, or I've never had that urge. I mean, I may get to that point simply because, you know, obviously someone else in my life wants that and they want it a lot and it means a lot to them so you know I'll, I'll see what I can do I'm trying very hard to try and get over some uh, psychological barriers that inhibit me but it's hard work it's hard work for both parties to deal with these things Michael Millman okay 55 single no wife no kids lots of interest yeah, there you go yep Well, it seems to be behaving a lot better now, so that's a good thing. I just don't have an inclination to extend my genetic order. I just It's just not there. For me, my legacy was probably more likely going to be source code. Have you turned a little bit... Ca oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not religious either. Spiritual, perhaps. Religious, not so much. I think the one thing that still keeps me a little bit sort of curious as to the limits of our knowledge is just simply trying to understand what's beyond the limits of, say, the universe. Yeah, it's like, and no matter how many layers of the onion you peel off, there's always more. So people say, well, it's a simulation. You go, well, what's outside the simulation? Yeah. We've all had these thoughts. And I think that's the one thing that makes me ponder a little bit. And the fact of something, where did anything come from if at some point there was nothing? You know, it's awfully hurtful to the brain. Jessica, that's really unfortunate that people do that to you. I wish you the best of luck with actually getting your rights to decide what to do with your body being acknowledged. I think that is absolutely... Some people just do have that... You, you have that absolute sense of you. this is not what you want to be doing. And I you know, think it's fair that you get to make that choice yourself. I can understand if people are younger, but... By the time you hit your mid-twenties, come on, it's... And if you do make a screw-up of a choice, well, that's that's something you live with. It. Don't... I hate that other people seem to decide that they have a choice over what you get to do with what you have. I can understand that there are limits on what you can do if it affects someone else directly. But if you're just simply deciding on things that affect you, then that's your right. Of course, half the problem is that people say, well, you know, if you decide to say off yourself or whatever, then a typical human being is worth a couple of million dollars sort of thing. So you've deprived society of a few million dollars. So I can see that argument. But overall, I think you know, we are a little bit archaic, um, still tied up with the prior religious hocus pocus type stuff. And it's inhibiting people from making choices that would make their lives happier. Anyway, so this looks like this is repaired since I'm waffling on. It's running a little bit slow though, but I suspect that could be because I don't have any fans or anything in it. But it does seem to be running, so I'm going to reinstall everything and make sure it performs properly. See so yeah, it's really really sluggish and we know that this USB stick is not normally that sluggish in fact it's so sluggish I'm going to power it off no well the battery is connected that's the hiccup unless it's a dodgy battery it was newly installed it was from iFixit so who knows I really hope it is not a bad battery because that would mean having to remove it which means the warranty is probably void which means yeah that's not going to be fun at all 
Mm, I'll probably have to... I'll probably have to uh, make the loss on that one. It did seem to be charging though, so... Yeah, usually they won't charge unless... Um, unless it's detected properly. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing anything with that screen. I will leave that to the person who owns it to meddle with that sort of thing. When it comes to these screens, do not mess with them unless you explicitly have approval and you explicitly have indemnity against any damages happening. These are not cheap screens. So it's better to have a slightly ugly looking one that works than a pretty looking one that doesn't. Alright, now we've got no bong. What the hell's going on here? <gasps> I know what I did wrong there. Oh, shite. I've reconnected the fans and did all that stuff and the battery was still connected. Doesn't help that this has got Big Sur on it. Big Sur does not play nicely with these older machines. Do not put Big Sur on it. Okay, go go up to Mojave or maybe even Catalina, but you know, keep Big Sur off them. For some people it works, but it seems like overall it's generally a negative type experience. Uh, Andre, what have I done now? I definitely think it's a step backwards in terms of visual aesthetics as well. With the icons and such. It's taking a little while to boot again. Something's slowing this thing down. Something is definitely slowing this down. Did I just see a flicker up there? We've got flickering on this screen. I can see up here and here. I'm definitely detecting, yeah, there's flickering going on over here. Kind of like when the backlight's giving up. Oh, I see why it was slow. It was because I was, it was fixing up the file system. It's giving me... Uh, what's going on here? It's a 2.3 i7, 16 gigabyte. This is no slouch of a machine. Yeah, the current draw will be high because it's running directly off the power supply. It's not running off the battery at this point. But this is definitely running slower than it should be. Something is upsetting it and I don't know what. 
And it could be the battery. It could be a bad battery dumping bad data, you know, messing up with the I2C lines. Because this is sort of behavior I expect with the battery. Uh, just go get another one from my other supplier and see if it changes behavior. Yeah, that's not running. There's something is distinctly cactus here. Shut down. Oh wait, wait. Maybe it was because I was running too. All right, the frames per second was 60 frames per second. That's pretty valid. Temperatures have come up. Yeah, something still feels fishy. Well, it runs without the charge, so I've disconnected that. Let it run for a bit. Once it drops below 95%, you can plug the charger back in and it will commence charging. If you put the power, the MagSafe, back in before 95%, it won't actually start charging until it gets to 95 These machines are very hungry for power. You know, you do have the separate GPU you got a lot of RAM chips on it. You got two fans again, not the fans use it a lot, but uh, there, there's a lot of parts on these machines. And so, yeah, there, there is a fairly high power consumption. And the big screen, yes. I'm um, just got more, uh, I could say, I'm more a case of I think there's, it's more a case of there's going to be something more beyond just the uh, soulless physics or science that we can tell. I don't seek out anything like um, esoteric type things. And I do wonder with the UFO alien situation at times, though, the fact that people go, well, we haven't been visited and we've never found any. Hey, what just happened then? That's stalled. There is always the possibility that we are actually the first life forms in the universe. Where do I UV lights from? No idea. eBay. Miles, that's also possible, yes. They just don't want to visit us. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I will leave this. It seems to be going okay. It is holding 100% on the charge, so I'm still curious what was going on there. But I will put this through the ultrasonic and see how it behaves. Where their uh, uh, ant farm, alien ant farm, they actually did what I thought was a superior rendition of Smooth Criminal compared to Michael Jackson's version. I know some people may consider that sacrilegious, but um, quite yeah, their version is memorable.
Tony, I'm not actually sure. Being a 3787, I actually don't know if that's bef sufficiently above the threshold, but I'm not sure. Come on. It's still shutting down. The fans are still spinning, spinning, spinning. There we go. Okay. So that one needs to have a test and wash and all that other stuff. And for goodness sake, Paul, disconnect that battery. Oh, my goodness. Give myself a heart attack. But at least the VRM replacement worked. As in, this. by worked, I mean we didn't destroy it. <laughs> all right, one more job left for the night. Uh, what have we got? iPhone 8. Unfortunately, I haven't logged this one in. But it looks like it's a... It has suffered some kind of severe mechanical stress. It's bent that way on that side and that way... Oh, that is weird. So it's twisted. Now, now the reason why I say severe mechanical stress is because it's quite hard to get these frames to bend. Alright, I'm guessing that... I think they want to data off this one because I suspect it's not going to work. I will not fire it up until I've taken that screen off. Because I get too many people where they damage their iPhones, the screens, and they leave them for a week or two before they get them to me. And then when I finally do get them, and I power it up after I've fixed up things, it gives the dreaded, this iPhone is locked response and they're like it wasn't like that before and it's like yeah well, that's because the screen's been you know, I told you to bring it around but unfortunately you can't express the sense of urgency sufficiently to people and so yeah they lose their data because they didn't heed your warning even if you tell them you say to them you need to get that around here because it's probably going to be putting bad keyboard touches in yeah I'll get around there so, too late, gone, bye-bye, ta-ta, see ya, bad data. Okay, this does... Right, this has had a screen replacement. This isn't a sit-down one, because the curvature is different on the left and the right side. This is, I've been run over on something uneven and I've warped myself like a potato chip. Thank goodness at least this one actually has already had screen replacement so it was easy to get the screen out. Yep. Damn it, where did that go? Oh, there it is. I hate those little screws around the camera retaining bracket because they don't have a lot of magnetic um, strength. Yeah, they're, they're not reactive to the magnet so much. Alright, I'm going to get a test iPhone 8 screen. Arnold, maybe they're on DLS, daylight time, saving time, <laughs> they haven't arrived yet. Okay, let's see if we just simply need a screen replacement. It'd be very nice if that's all we need to do and everything comes up good. Some people sort of, they'll come in, they say, look, can you just, we don't want the phone anymore, we want to you know, shift it off 
go to some other option like a new iPhone and you know can you just transfer the data for us and I say to him look it's actually just cheaper overall for me to replace your screen and then you do the data transfer because if I've got to do the data transfer I've got to get your Apple ID and all passcodes and you know all the other bits and pieces and then I go back and forth back and forth and this okay so screens come up good and so say so, and they'll go but yeah we, you know we don't really need the screen fixed and it's like it's just cheaper for me to do it this way because the amount of time you use plugging this thing and getting it backed up and then yeah you know, it doesn't seem like a lot but if you've got to do it a number of times at any given day you can use up an extra half hour or something and half hour can make a big difference one for the bracket holds the tactics are worse oh yeah fortunately you don't have to do them too much but as you know but um yeah I hate doing the charge port on these things half the time. Is it this one that... Uh, I think it was an 11 I did the other day. I can't remember. Anyway, it was one of them and it was... I used up this whole magnetic board just spreading all the parts out so that I could get it back together with some reasonable chance. Precisely Pedro, yep. Or it's money or it's... Chance is missed scamming someone in your case, right? Turn the power on. I'm waiting, it's charging. We're on 1.6 amps at the moment. Unfortunately, you don't get to see that. Hey, Sonny, you actually made You got your sorry little butt out of bed. Congratulations, sir, New Yorker. Unfortunately, you missed all the activity. We're all done. So we're just checking that this iPhone 8 can be revived. Battery change for an XS. I haven't done an XS battery change. Oh, it was an XR that I had to change the charge port on. Yeah, the XR, I did not enjoy changing that charge port. It was no fun at all. I have not fitted it yet. See, we still got the... I'm just testing. I'm testing to make sure this is not a iPhone locked scenario. And it would appear that it actually is okay. Awesome. Emergency. So do 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 Okay. Touch assembly all works. Hmm. Okay. Alright, so we're just gonna do a screen change. And they should be right. They can back up their own data. Was this iPhone iClouds can be unlocked but not iPads? I'm not sure what you mean by that. I've said it before, but what I do wish that Apple would do, and even though this is a detriment to my own business in some ways, is I do wish they would provide sufficient iCloud backup space for the device that you have purchased for the duration of the warranty of the device and have it on by default. Now, people are going to probably scream more about that, in terms of privacy violations or whatever than the whole let's make hash codes of your images so that we can suss out porno pictures but it would save me so much grief you know looking into those people's eyes to tell them that nope your data's gone because your screen decided to try and become sentient and unlock your phone and being harsh here, it's not really the part that hurts me so much. It's more the fact that they just keep asking me, Are you sure? Is there not some way? I heard Freddie down the road can do it if you do this and this and this. And going through the process of eliminating all the options that they think are available to recover their data when really you know good and well that short of them paying maybe 15000 bucks. And maybe if they've got an older iOS installed, they may be able to get access to their data through some sort of exploit. So for the most part, you say, no, it's gone. But yeah, 
I understand people don't like that sort of finality on something that is precious to them. Even though realistically 99.99% .99 of the photos they've got on there they wouldn't remember if you said to them, you took this photo and they're like, what? No I didn't. No I didn't. Uh uh. But I get it. Yeah, it's We don't like losing our data. I'm pretty sure you exploit the checkmate hole up to 11 to unlock them. Well, legalities aside, no. Oh, you're talking about iOS 11, of course. Yeah. See, most of these would have a more recent version of iOS now. You know what I think would make a good team is Pedro and Sonny. I reckon the combination of Pedro and Sonny running amok in New York, that would be something probably um, movies could be written about. I can just see those two absolutely decimate. They're kind of like the MacBook Mafia or something. Pedro with his hard-hitting tactics and Sonny with his low-balling tactics. Just seems like a match made in heaven. I should fly Pedro over to New York and see what happens. Well, Steve, I do tell them when they get the new phone to do that. And of course, the hard thing is getting them to do that. And usually they go, oh, you know, it's it's five bucks a month. That's quite a bit. And it's like, you you know, you're going to pay hundreds of dollars to get your data back if you're lucky and you're squabbling over five dollars a month and now you would not do well here there's too many trucks here that would run you down I just realised I didn't have to take the back plate off. This one's already got a back plate on it. Habits from earlier days of iPhone repairs where you definitely had to remove the backs and move them to the new phones. I'm kind of curious, how many people here have been doing iPhones since, the, say, the 3GS? Because that's about when I started, is when the 3GS was out and the 4 had just come out. And we had to live through, when the 5 came out, we had to live through the scarcity of the iPhone 5 screens. That was not fun. Damn this. I hate, this connector doesn't always line up in my favor. May the connector always be in your favor. Hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Yep. No. Yes. Okay, good. Start with iPhone 4. Day one, last hard drive was eight terabyte. Uh, that's the sort of sizes that I've been buying still. In terms of storage per cost, it, they seem to be a bit of a sweet point at the moment. I would love to get something like a fourteen terabyte one, just for the hell of it. Start with the iPhone five. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Steve, yeah. I don't know if is ready to see the road trains. I mean, six bogey road trains is not really something... Yeah. I'm sorry, no, look, you know, we, we joke about what happened to you, but in all seriousness, I'm glad you're still here with us, and I imagine that you know it's something that you're gonna have to live you know, the legacy of that is probably going to be lifelong 
and yeah, like I said, we joke about it, but I appreciate that there's also a genuinely serious effect on you from that. And I'm not just talking physical either. So my apologies if there is any, um, yeah, if you're squirming there and you're like, God oh, damn it guys, shut the hell up. Because we probably won't shut up, we'll just keep bringing it up. Kind of like when I was living in South Africa. And everybody would always be coming up to me with the damn sheep jokes. Okay, I'm not comparing sheep jokes to being run over. But the, s the same thing. Everybody that m meets you thinks they're being funny for the first time to you. Or, you know, thinks that it's the first time you've heard it. I'm like, no, nah, really? I didn't realize you thought that. But... I would tolerate it simply because it was like an icebreaker for them. But there were some days where it was just getting a little bit too repetitive. And sometimes it was because people just didn't know what else to tell you, say to you. It, I suppose it's a bit like the international version of talking about the weather. Yeah, Miles, well that was the counter debate. It's like, no, sorry, it's actually the New Zealanders with the higher po population percentage sort of thing. Hey, Margarita Doctor. Yeah. So did you get the Facebook for admin? Yes, I did. We The main fault was the HS105 PCH switch was completely corroded. We had to rebuild a couple of traces there. And then it wouldn't start up properly. And we think it may have been a wayward capacitor that I removed that was just hanging around on the board somewhere. And we brushed the board down and it started working again. Uh, Miles, the fun thing is, of course, when people don't differentiate between the New Zealand accent versus the Australian accent. In fairness, I can sort of understand it. There are many people who cannot differentiate between the Canadian accent and the American accent. Mind you, that's... Yeah. There's so many different American, or I should say United States accents. It's funny, I'm putting that Phillips head screw in with the tri wing. Come on, come on, get on. There you go. Okay. I don't know why, but that feels funky. The tension on this flex, it feels weird. Almost like I've installed it incorrectly, but I haven't. But it just feels that way. It genuinely feels that way. I think it might be just the late night. I don't want to accidentally push the battery connector in while I'm doing this touch connector. Okay, that's better. Uh, Warner Brothers cartoons popular in Australia New Zealand. Bob, um, which ones in particular? And also, I suppose it depends on what era you're talking about. Yeah, we used to have things like Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd and all that sort of stuff back in the 70s and 80s. But they sort of fell out of favour. I mean, kids still watch if it's Disney related. God damn it, man. Ugh. Ugh. 
Sometimes the screw gets the perfect alignment and no troubles. Other times you really gotta fight for it. Alrighty. Alright, we're gonna make sure we don't pinch these cables here. Sometimes I think I'm a little bit too paranoid about the pinching. I don't think it actually is at risk as much as I think it is. But I did a pinch accidentally, obviously accidentally, on a uh, an 8 quite some time ago at the time when replacement 8 screens were extremely expensive and obviously I ate that cost because it was my own dumb fault but it subsequently made me a little bit paranoid. Still deciding if I should get a laser machine or not to do the backs. It's yeah, half and half. All right. Just needs to charge. Let's see, 800, 900. Okay, that's good. It's doing 1.6 amps, so that's good. How many garage bras did you have here in South Africa? I didn't have any in the garage. I actually had a proper, really nice bra set up in my backyard of my house. Not that I had much of a backyard, but it was enough. It was paved, and I had a good bra area. It was big enough. I could put a poiki in there, and I was able to make it so that the poiki could stay to the side while the rest of the work was being done. So, you know, when you're frying up your buravos and all that sort of stuff, but um, I was really happy with that, and I think I probably had one every month or so. And would cheat with the briquettes. You just get the bag of briquettes and put the bag just in the you know in the receptacle for where you put all your coals and, that, and just light the bag. <laughs> it worked, no complaints. Because most of the time, though, I'd fill up and pop and sauce and hunters before the food was actually ready. I mean, pup and sauce is good food too, but um, yeah, most of the time I'd fill up before any of the meat was ready, but you'd still keep eating sometimes after you chucked up all the hunters and start again. Hey, Thermal. Burras will die if they only have one bra a month. <laughs> what, I, what I always found amusing, and I quite liked it, is the fact that they would tend to... Um, Australians tend to have their barbecues in summer more often than not, whereas the South Africans love to do it in winter. And I actually much prefer to do a bra in winter because, I mean, it's like... In summer, it's too bloody hot to have a barbecue standing out there at the smoke and whereas in winter, it's the perfect company-type uh, activity. Yeah. So I think the South Africans got that pretty much smack on. Whereas the Australians are a bit more of the lunatics. So, Alright, well I think we're done for the night. I've got um, a couple of machines to ultrasonic. And yeah, we'll see how they come out. And by the looks of it, the $200 in the drive was worth the investment. But I'll find out tomorrow when I... I've got to change that clutch cover too. But anyway, it's getting late which means it's getting time for me to go and do some programming. So, until then, you all take care. Thank you very much for attending, and remember to like and subscribe. I much appreciate it if you do. It helps get the numbers up, helps YouTube stop treating me like a second-class citizen, which, of course, yeah, I don't feel like I am, even though I am. If you could see the state of this house, you would know that I'm actually not a second-class citizen. I'm more like gutter-level citizen. <laughs> but we're working on it. We've got a carpet, a nice chair, we've got tiles coming on Monday for um, the back patio. We're working on it. Takes time, takes money. Anyway, you'll take care. I'll see you next time.